Hey guys, hey, it's Kelly Kalorn, Ben Simone, and I am uh, excited and really nervous to have this conversation with you, but I think it's really important. Um, I need to have closure, and I want us all to have closure on what happened during Scary Island in Real Housewives of New York. Um, so let's go back. It was 2000, was it 2000? 2009. It was 2009 and, or was it 2010? 2009 or 2000, I think, no, 2010. I don't even remember. Um, I don't remember the date, but I remember the feeling and that's what's important for today. So it was 2010 and I was asked by uh, a series of women that, was on, that were on the show to go on a trip uh, to go to St. John. And I was super hesitant to go anywhere. And I was actually, um, because I wasn't getting along with the women and I just didn't understand really the nature, I wasn't understanding the, really the nature of the show. Uh, I wasn't understanding, you know, the narrative. I was just filming to film and having a great time and trying to, um, you know, celebrate being on the show and every time that I went into a scene and I talked about this on Kit Keenan's podcast, I felt like I was that new girl in school and I was that new girl in school, not just once, not just twice, not three times, not four times. When I was young, I, my twin brother and I went to a lot of different schools and, um, you know, I just want you guys to know that for someone who knows what that feels like to go in every day and to every year uh, and to have, you know, people kind of like, who are you? You know, what are you doing here? You know, why are you here? To, you know, being in, on camera like, oh, you know, who are you? Um, you know, you're not that great. You're not all that. Um, you know, that really, it started to really, really wear on me a lot. and. Um, coupled with the fact that I was under a lot of pressure because, you know, the women were not happy with me being on the show and, you know, that in itself is just really, really sad that, you know, different women that come to New York that meet each other for the first time, uh, you know, can't be friends. I mean, I think that's just the strangest thing. I mean, I've met so many, met so many different women in New York through so many different, you know, opportunities, whether it's real estate, modeling, fashion, you know, whatever it is, I've met so many women and I've just never been in that kind of position before, especially in New York where, you know, it's such a great city where people like really celebrated people and they want people to do well because it's a great, it's a city of, you know, the best of the best. So, um, it was just strange to be in an environment that was so oddly competitive for no reason. Like we weren't playing a sport. We weren't, uh, trying to get our child into school. You know, we weren't doing anything that was competitive. However, we were competing against each other. So it was just very, very strange. There was nothing, there was nothing to win, there was nothing to lose, but the stakes for some reason seemed really, really high. So the stakes were really high. I had to go to, I had to go to St. John. Uh, Luann couldn't go, uh, Jill couldn't go. And um, so the producers were like, I really want you to come. So I decided to go. The night before I left, my hairdresser, who's the most amazing man, Bradley Arian, was like, I'm gonna make you look beautiful because I want you to feel amazing on this trip. And so we put extensions in my hair for the first time. And I had clip-ins before, I had glue, you know, glue in before, but I'd never had extensions before by great lengths. And I felt, so beautiful. I felt so beautiful. And all my insecurity kind of went, you know, by the wayside. And so I got off the plane and I was really excited. And um, we, you know, arrived at the airport and, uh, the, and they were like, oh, we're gonna go to this, you know, hotel, you're gonna be great. And when I got to the hotel, I was like, I'm gonna get a massage for tomorrow, so I'm gonna feel really relaxed and ready to go. And the masseuse said to me, oh, 
you're getting uh, a massage. You're like, oh, you know, aren't you a model? You're, you know, I, I know you, I recognize you as a model. And she's like, there's a big celebrity in the hotel. And I was like, oh my God, like, who is it? Like, I love celebrities. I'm like, oh my God, it must be someone famous. I can't wait to hear. And it was one of my castmates telling the masseuse that she was a big celebrity on the show and in the uh, hotel. So that was a kind of a funny, odd way. I would kind of just kind of like, kind of like, what is going on? Cut to, we get on the boat and we're trying to organize everything. And of course, I'm always like, you guys, you know, take work, you know, take whatever room you want, you know. I'm so used to modeling, I'm so used to, you know, rooming with tons of girls. I'm so used to like, you know, being in, you know, hotel rooms with a lot of people. Like I just was like, it's fine. Just take whatever bed you want, whatever room you want, it's fine. And, uh, you know, we, we find out that one of the castmates has a uh, very traumatic health issue. And I immediately was just like, I don't want to film. I can't be around this. I don't want to be a part of this. This is not, you know, I'm not, I was, I'm not here to be a part of any of this. And it really, really set the, the tone for a very, very bad trip. And I wanted to leave immediately. Remember that scene where I get up from the boat, when I get up from the, uh, the table and I'm just like, I'm done. I don't want to be a part of this. I just did not want to have to be, so, you know, engaged with someone who had a health issue with in front of me. I just wasn't going to, I wasn't going to film and have someone, you know, have some kind of issue. So I, every single time there was a scene where there were raised voices or people were getting aggressive or, um, you know, heart rates were going up, as you could see by all those scenes, I was always leaving because I just didn't want to be a part of that conversation or that energy level or to have any kind of, you know, bad things happen to anybody while we were filming. So that's my state of mind. Um, that's the beginning of the trip. Uh, when we got to the beautiful home, I feel so bad because this home is such a gorgeous home and it's been kind of like, you know, scarred by, you know, Scary Island, but it is a beautiful, beautiful home. And thank you so much for the owners for letting us film there. Um, I, we got into the house and everyone was downstairs with all their rooms were downstairs and my room was upstairs. No Wi-Fi, no cell phones. No television just me upstairs at the top of the roof you know it's like literally like basically up in the top like at the like the attic room which is actually a beautiful room but there was no cell phone service there I had my own bathroom but I was all by myself the entire time no one came to see me no one was like hey do you want to have a glass of wine do you want to hang out just the producers would like knock ever once in a while and just be like okay you're ready to go you're gonna you know be filming in a second we have to mic you up so it was very, you know, we just come off a boat where I found out there was a serious health issue. And then I'm on, you know, I'm in this room that, uh, you know, where I was all by myself. So we've, you know, did a couple of scenes and things weren't, you know, were, you know, things were fine. Um, one of the, uh, you know, one of the castmate members decided not to film with me again. This was like the game, you know, it's like, just don't film with people so that they don't get any air time, even though you're, you know, supposed to be on a show. And um, imagine if they were like real actors and they were just like, sorry, you, we're not filming with you. Sorry. Um, and so I was up there and we were supposed to go to dinner and we, I wasn't filming with one of the cast members, which was actually fine because it was less stressful. And Right before the dinner, I looked down and everyone else's hair is like super frizzy and we're all like no makeup and everything. And one of the women was with, who had the health issue was getting her hair blown out and talking with the producers. And I thought that was very strange. And then I, before dinner, I went to the kitchen and there was a whole big issue because the chef that was in the kitchen had cut his finger from all the stress from cooking dinner for us, um, which was also really upsetting. Um, you know, it's just dinner. 
it's just, you know, it's just a meal. There was no reason to have anyone, you know, like losing a finger because they're cooking for us. And then I got a phone call from my daughter screaming at me. And remember, my kids are very, very young at this time. And then if you do know this about me and you don't know this about me, I am a serious mama bear. My children come first. I've always put my children first. They are my number one priority. I am a full-time single parent. I am the breadwinner, I'm the provider, I am the mother, I'm the father, I am everything for my kids. And I think that a lot of people don't know that about me. I think that they think that just like money grows on trees and that, you know, I have worked very, very hard all my life and I'm so proud, which I've told you many times, I'm living the dream, American dream one mistake at a time because I've made so many mistakes but I feel like I am living the American dream because I've worked so hard from when I first started out as a model to you know where I am sitting here today. And I'm incredibly proud and humbled by everyone who helped me to get to where I am today. So I get a phone call from my children and my daughter, my oldest daughter, and she's screaming and crying and my nanny gets on the phone and tells me that she's leaving and I don't know if any of you guys uh, who have children or nieces or nephews or are around children, when a child is crying and tells you, know, you that when you're on a trip, whether it's for work or play, and says, you need to come and get me immediately. I want, I can't, I'm, my nanny's, you know, I hate my nanny, I want, I, don't, I want you home, I want you home, crying, you know, that really, really affects me. And, um, you know, some people are affected by things differently, but when it comes to my kids, I will do anything for them. And all of their friends know that I will do anything for them. So I was really, really upset, really upset with my nanny, uh, trying to figure out, you know, if I could get my, you know, boyfriend at the time to come and pick up my kids and take them to the Hamptons. You know, what, would the, what, would the, what was gonna be the solution to the problem? Uh, I was getting you know, yelled at because you know, I, had to, I had to film because one of the castmates didn't wanna film very long um, because she had a health issue. And so I'm trying to navigate my children and also trying to you know, do the best I can at work. And so I finally, my boyfriend at the time was like, great, I'll, I will uh, you know, pick, pick them up in like 10 minutes and you, know, you just go and do your work and I will see you tomorrow. And so I told the producers I was leaving the next morning. And I walked into the room and everyone was drinking at this time, which is normal, you're on a vacation, everyone's drinking. And I just was not in the mindset to hear about whatever they were talking about. I didn't wanna, hear, I didn't wanna listen to gossip, my, the thing that was like, you know, going through my head was, you know, were my kids gonna be okay? And are they gonna, are they gonna be happy? And is everything gonna be okay? Like, I just was like, are my kids gonna be okay? And, um, you know, some of the other ladies, they were snapping at me because I wasn't responding to, you know, their conversation, which was just, I just wasn't in the mind space or the head space to listen to their conversations. So cut to, we end up going to dinner and I'm in the, my, that gorgeous purple dress um, by a vintage um, designer named Geminola. Um, such a beautiful dress. And I sit down and the only two people at the table that are sober are me and the woman with the health issues. Everyone else was drinking. And so I was really like dumbfounded that there was just so much, you know, drama and everyone was going crazy. You know, they were all like growing crazy. And again, with the woman with the health issues, I was really concerned because again, I didn't want to be around someone that was, you know, going to like their energy levels were going to be raised in case anything happened. And I, you know, got really, really upset. And so I left the table and before I left the table, one of the women, um, you know, her hair was falling off her head, so I helped her put, put her hair back on so she would feel good, because I didn't want to be filmed with her hair falling off. And, you know, she was saying to me, like, I don't understand what you're saying. 
about why um, one of our castmates, you know, was saying all these things, trying to hurt you and trying to put you in the post. And what she wouldn't let me say because she was, you know, drinking a lot, she wouldn't let me say, I was working for the post at that time. And uh, this woman was calling in to the press to try to, let, you know, make herself feel better and look better to the press by trying to make me look bad for something that doesn't even matter. I mean, nobody even cares, but she wanted her name in the press with me, which is ridiculous. But that's kind of like her MO is to get her name in the press with people that are, you know, somewhat well known or who are successful so that it makes her look successful. Well, I mean, that doesn't, you don't need to do that. That's not, that's not what women in New York, successful people in New York, they don't want to be in the press. It's like every single very, very wealthy person, they pay, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to keep their name out of the press. So most successful people don't like that. And um, I just found it very strange that she was trying to go after me and trying to harm my family, meaning my children, by making me look bad when there was nothing to really, that I, I didn't do anything to make, to, to do it, I didn't do anything to make her look bad. I didn't take her job away from her. I didn't harm her children. I didn't, I don't know any of her boyfriends. I did, don't know any of her husbands. Like I, never did anything that would, you know, legitimize her response or her actions towards me. Um, and my reactions towards her actions were legitimate. If you attack a human being, they're gonna attack you back. And if you have bad behavior, you're always gonna be down here. It doesn't matter if you own, you know, you know, I don't know, like, you know, all of America, you're still, going to be down here and the people that are acting the who are adulting and who are really making good decisions for themselves and for others are always going to be up here and that what that's what that was all about it wasn't about you know I'm rich or poor I'm better than you I'm worse than you no it's that I have children and I deal on an, on an adult level and for people that are going to you know be you know nasty to me for no reason when they don't even know who I am they're always gonna be in that infantile space. Um, and so back to the dinner, a lot of conversations about, you know, this wealthy person to get to, to get relevance, that person, this person, that person. And I just was in the back of my head thinking, I have to film and I am going to be packing in 10 minutes and I'm on an airplane in the morning. And I just couldn't wait to get off the island. I just couldn't wait to get home to my family, not to get away from the filming. I just couldn't wait to get to a place where I can make sure my children were safe. And as you guys saw, the following days afterwards, I didn't sit, you know, at the restaurant with everyone else and, you know, badmouth people and go after people. You know, I just was just, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the right fit and I had an issue with my family and I made the decision to go home and I went home. And I was asked to go back into the scene. They wanted me to go back into the scene. And so I went back in and I brought jelly beans with me because as you guys know, I love candy. And I, um, I just remember being like yelled at and like by a, like an, another adult, I've never been yelled at by anyone in my entire life. And I was just so dumbfounded. I was just, I was shell shocked. And I was, you know, it was just, it was just, it was just so much built up. I mean, you guys have never been on these shows, but there's just, it's just, there's just so much built up. And most of the time there's somebody with you or your friend or, you know, your, um, you know, your husband's there or when someone's like trying to attack you, there's, there's, there's somebody there to, to buffer it. But, um, you know, at the time these women were on the, who were on the show were more concerned about being on another show with the woman with the health issues than to be a good solid friend. 
So there were a lot of things that were, that were happening. My children were bawling their eyes out. I had to organize their safety. I had three women on a ship, four women on a, on a, on an island who were, you know, they, they were, you know, they were just nasty. They were constantly being nasty because they thought, oh, if I'm nasty, people, the fans are going to love me. Well, great. If fans, if fans want to love you because you're nasty, then that's great for you. That should be your legacy. Like I'm a nasty person. Like I don't want that to be my legacy. I want it to be that I was a great parent, a great provider and a great friend. So how has this affected me and other people? This has affected my children. This has affected my well-being. Fortunately, you know, I got my MBA from Northeastern. Fortunately, I had an you know, amazing book deal with Simon & Schuster. But imagine those people that couldn't pivot. Imagine people that are in a situation being whatever we want to call it, bullied, harassed, aggressed, attacked, whatever word you want, to, whatever verb you want to use, it doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is, is that when people are so aggressive and trying to, like, to, literally trying to hurt other people and hurt their livelihood, that's when I have to draw the line. And I am really lucky. I'm so you guys don't know how lucky I am. I am so lucky. I am so lucky that I have friends and family and I have so many people in New York who were so incredibly helpful to me and who were like, you have to pivot and you have to just like let this go behind you. And it doesn't matter what the rest of the world thinks because this woman you know, made it her, her, you know, choice to try to harm you and your family. You have to pivot. And so I did. And it wasn't easy. It was not easy. You know, yes, I'm done, I've done very well in real estate, but it wasn't easy to have people say, oh, you're in real estate. You're never going to be anything. You're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to sell anything. You're crazy. You're this, you're that. I mean, I'm the mother of two girls on my own. I, I, I mean, I can't, I mean, to this day, it's like 12 years later, I still cannot believe the comments from people. I, I can't, I can't even, if this show had gone on today, if it was filmed today, it would be a totally different show. People would be like, what is going on? First of all, mental health is not a joke. Mental health is not a joke. I mean, you, the, the fans and, you know, everyone that was involved, they are, they must be so grateful that I have, you know, a solid framework because what if I were mentally ill? What if I, what if I did have something that was seriously wrong with me? I mean, the ramifications of those actions could have been really, really serious. And I want you all to know that when you watch TV, watch it with enthusiasm and love your characters and love your narratives and love your plot lines and get excited about it. But when you watch TV and then you go online and you feel the need to harm other people, stop yourself first and think to yourself, does that person deserve that? Does that 20 year old on The Bachelor deserve that? Does that 50 year old on Housewives deserve that? Does that, you know, does, does anyone on any show that's going out there to like, you know, maybe do something great for themselves deserve any kind of badgering or constant harassment for over 12 years? No one does, no one does. And whether you like me or not, the takeaway from this entire message is be kind. That's all I want you to do is be kind. I'm Kelly Kalora Benson.